I think at this moment, you know, this pickup in exports are really mainly coming from China, and uh, China is doing lots of uh, public investment, uh, real estate development uh, investment, and also high demand for automobile. So on this aspect, I don't hear a lot of uh, bottleneck uh, supply chain problem, and then uh, the Japan's manufacturers are able to export quite quickly. And uh, in the meanwhile, the exports to the United States and Europe uh, continues to pick up, but it, they haven't really recovered the pre-COVID-19 crisis period level. So at this moment, I think Japan's exports are really counting on the China's continued growth, and so far uh, it's okay. But having said that, uh, Japan's uh, trade uh, performance is not extremely good because if imports are uh, very sluggish, it means that Japan's uh, uh, Japan's uh, capex, uh, uh, you know, uh, capex uh, um, patterns and uh, movement are not uh, doing well. So because of the sluggish, uh, uh, you know, business investment, so uh, imports are also sluggish. So so just the export growing doesn't really help the whole Japanese economy at this moment. Mm. That's certainly a good point. And of course, there's the, there's the question of consumer demand as well. So something that is certainly occurring across the globe is shipping costs are up, logistic costs are up, yes. uh, input costs like raw materials are up as well. Is the Japanese consumer strong enough for all of those higher costs to be passed on to them? Mm. At this moment, we don't really see a high pickup uh, uh, in those prices. I mean, we, we hear those uh, price pickup, but uh, in, the, in terms of uh, consumer prices, we don't see such, such an increase. At this moment, Japan's prices continues to drop, mm. so uh, we haven't seen that. I think it's partly because oil prices are still low, and that also supports the Japanese consumer sector. But having said that, Japanese consumption is remain very weak, and because the wages are not picking up, and not able, not everybody get uh, get back their jobs. So I think uh, consumption remains uh, quite difficult uh, uh, situation uh, for time being. Yeah, and it also seems like cash is king in Japan uh, with the kind of uh, deposits uh, we have seen uh, pick up uh, through the course of January. When will that change? When when you see animal spirits coming back uh, and mm -hmm. the investment cycle kicking off? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that the banks deposit are growing sharply, but indeed also banks' uh, uh, loans uh, to the private sector is uh, growing quite rapidly uh, since the COVID-19. But the point is that the deposit growth is uh, growing much faster than uh, credit growth. So uh, indeed, uh, Bank of Japan's uh, you know, uh, lending to the commercial banks, also helping banks to lend uh, uh, loans to the private sector, but the point is that a lot of people, especially consumers, they want to save all this, uh, you know, uh, additional income. So it's not really uh, helping consumers' uh, consumption to grow, but the uh, uh, company, they have to borrow to survive. Very quickly, so the Japanese yen is currently around 105 and change. Uh, for, the, uh, for the upcoming fiscal year, what would you expect the average band to be for dollar yen? Mm. So I think 105, one, uh, between 103 to 107 is reasonable. And then this Japan yen's movement is at this moment all dis decided by US dollar index. It's not really uh, from a Japanese domestic factors. But at this moment, despite the sharp, uh, uh, relatively uh, appreciated uh, yen uh, around 105 uh, yen, I don't hear any criticism from manufacturers. I think it's because the exports are picking up. So also, yen's appreciation does not help uh, their foreign profits to grow uh, once combated in Japanese yen. But the pickup in the export volume at this moment uh, offsetting those neg negative impact coming from Ian's appreciation.